So we're gonna continue on the series of videos using the two plate method, a method where you take the feed to the switch on a lighting circuit. And the reason behind this, it reduces the number of cables at the lighting point. And we saw in another video how the benefit of having less cables at the lighting point makes it easier to connect things like LED downlights. And we use the easy fit connectors from Collingwood. In this video, we're gonna convert it from a one-way circuit to two-way by introducing a three-core cable between the first switch and the second switch, changing this one-way switch for a two-way switch, and adding in a second two-way switch. So we will have control from two positions, the LED downlighters in this circuit. So I understand in the real world, this three-core cable that we're gonna connect between our switches is not gonna take this very short journey between these two two-way switches. And we're actually gonna be bringing cables into the fabric of the building. We'll be chasing them into walls, possibly lifting floors, or running them through roof spaces in order to get the cable, which is a three-core and CPC, between the new two-way switch, replacing the one-way switch, to the new position two-way switch to have two-way control of the lighting circuit. So in this video presentation, I'm gonna put this cable in, I'm gonna show you the connections in the two two-way switches. So let's bring the camera in nice and close and see how I'm gonna make the connections, not in a one-way switch now, but in two two-way switches in order to control these LED downlights. So we've got original one-way switch here and our connections are using the two-plate method. So our neutrals in the maintenance-free connector blocks, the CPCs secured in the back of the insulated box in case we ever change it for a metal exposed conductive part. And we've got our common and L1 connections here. Common being the permanent line and switching line going out of L1. We're going to replace this with a two-way switch. Okay, it looks one gang, exactly the same as this one, one gang, but two-way. So we've got common L1 and L2 at the top. So we're going to replace those. We've added in a three-core cable. Okay, it's come no distance here. We can see between these, as we said before, this would normally be under floors, in ceilings, in walls, etc. And introduce this. However, the connections in here are identical in the real world. It's just the effort to put this cable in will be different. So I've stripped it back ready to go and I want it approximately 50 to 70 mil longer than the box. So we've gone past the box. So I just trim those back. And we're going to need to get rid of one conductor first. I'm going to get rid of the CPC first and then we'll talk about the other conductors afterwards. So moving these conductors out of the way, we're going to connect our CPC into the earthing terminal at the back here. Kick it round so it's of reasonable length in case we change it to an exposed conductive part in the future. And then we'll double it over and see if it will go into the actual termination itself. I've been struggling recently with some breathing issues. It sounds a bit like I'm out of breath, like I just run a marathon. It's actually, um, I'm struggling at the minute. I apologize for that. So the CPC terminal, uh, CPC goes in the terminal in the back of the box. Hopefully it can go doubled over and it can. And it's secured there in case we need it in the future for an exposed conductive part. I've done some videos on the channel about uh, metallic switches and exposed conductive parts. So if you want to check those out, do so. So we're going to take off our one-way switch. So I'm going to remove my one-way switch. And I'm going to replace it with our two-way switch. So we have two switches controlling the LED downlights in this exercise. Like so. And for me... I always use black as common. I know in industry often they use brown, but I use black as common. I do need to identify it as a switching line conductor. So I'm going to take some brown over sleeve in, place it over the top, and that's going to be my common connection. Again, if you use a different colour, that's not a problem, but I use black. Stripping it off, I'm going to use my knife. I know people use side cutters, pliers, or wire strippers. I don't here at college currently. I take my pliers. I will double that one over to go into my terminal. And I said, that's gonna go in the common terminal. Okay, okay. All right, so pop that one in, tiny up. And we've just got the other connections now to look at. For me, as I can see it, I can see that that one there is my permanent line coming in. And this was my switching line going out. So what I like to do with the other colours is I like to keep the permanent line with brown. So they're going to go together and it doesn't matter whether they go in L1 or L2. It doesn't matter which, but they're going to go together. I'm going to take my grey and I'm going to go with my switching line conductor. It wouldn't have mattered if I took my grey and I'd gone in with my permanent line down here and my uh, switching line with my brown. But I like to keep the permanent line and the brown of the three core together in one terminal. That's what I like to do. Again, we need to identify 
the gray as a switching line conductor with brown oversleeving. And I'm gonna to need to double all these ends over. So let's do that quickly. So double your terminations over. I like to fill the hole as best I can. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere, but we're not gonna say it. So I wanna put as much as I can in, so I'm gonna double over my terminations. I don't like these pliers, I slip all the time. Okay, there we go. That one and this one. Okay, so I've doubled over my terminations. I'm gonna take my brown now and I'm gonna connect it to my, which would have been my permanent line connection. And it doesn't matter whether I go in L1 or L2, it just happens to be it's L1, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna pop those two into there and then tighten those up. Again, the one thing I never seem to do in any of my videos is wear my glasses. It's actually using the force in order to get them in there. So connect those up. So that's those two, leaving me the gray in either L1 or L2, it doesn't matter. Identified with brown sleeving, going into the other one. Back that back a little bit. And we'll pop those two in there like so so just pop those in into there and we'll tighten those down and then we'll have a look at those connections again okay so one gang this time it's two-way i turn it over i've got a black common identified with brown sleeving i've got the permanent line with the brown of the three core the switching line with the gray of the three core identified with brown sleeving and I've completed my first two-way switch by simply adding a three-core in from my original position, which had a one-way switch. I've changed that one-way switch now for a two-way switch. I now will have multiple control from two positions of my LED downlights. Let's look at the second switch. So at the second position, which is our new switching position, which will also have a two-way switch. So again, common L1 and L2. And again, exactly the same as we did before, just keep the conductors commons the same. So we're just gonna make sure these are longer than we need the box. So 50 to 70 mil longer than the box, which is about there. And I'm gonna double those over. Brown sleeving is required for my uh, gray and black as before. So if I put those on now, I won't forget them during the presentation. So you can pick me up on it. So drop those on. And we're going to put the black in common. It's the only crucial one out of the live conductors is the black. We're going to keep it exactly the same as it was in the first switch. And it's going to go into common. And then we'll connect up our other two conductors. So black into common. Like so. Oops, push it in. Come on, guys. And tighten that one up. So black goes into common, leaving us L1 and L2. It doesn't matter which way around they go. We haven't got to get it exactly the same as the first one. So if gray's in L2 here, it doesn't matter if gray goes in L1 here. Likewise with the brown in reverse, it's only crucial that we get the black common identified with brown sleeving. Sorry, the black conductor in the common identified with brown sleeving. That's the crucial one here. We can pop in the CPC while we're at it as well. So the fold goes out of the way. Let's put the CPC in. Again, insulated box, it's there in the future in case it's changed to an exposed conductive part. So we're gonna double that one over. I truly have got to get my glasses on at some point. I am struggling. I hope your training's going well. I thank you and appreciate all the views that everybody gives me on the channel and all the support. So this is trying to mimic what's really happening in the real world in domestic dwellings where there's loads of down lights, where we've got the two plate method being used and that two plate method now has been adapted for two way switching. So let's do these two now as well. So again, like I said, it doesn't matter which one's L1 and L2, as long as our black is identified appropriately and goes in common. So we'll take our conductor and double that conductor over, like so. And then we'll double over our line conductor. Oops, got tiny. Like so. And again, I'm not bothered. Don't care which one's which. I'm just gonna pop those in L1 and L2. 
Some people might say, well, I always like to keep them exactly the same. Well, that's good, that's good, I don't mind that. But for working purposes, it won't matter which one you're going. So identified the gray conductor again with brown sleeving. We pop that in like so. And then we've got our second two-way switch, which would be our new one, our new position. Maybe you want a second switch in a bedroom, etc. All you've had to do, introduce the three core from your original switching position, change that switch from a one-way switch to a two-way, and connect your second two-way switch. I use black as common, you might use brown, but I use black. L1 and L2 don't matter which way around they go here, as long as we split them appropriately as we suggested in the further part of the video. So an out of breath Gaz has just shown you how to change a one-way circuit using the two plate method into a two-way circuit. So we've still got the feed coming down to our switch and from this first switch, our switching line and CPC are neutral going out to our LED down lighters. Well, we decided we want to add another switch, maybe in a bedroom or a kitchen to control the same lights. We replace the one-way switch here with a two-way switch. We introduce a three core and CPC cable here and then we put another brand new two-way switch at this end. Crucial for me, we keep the black as the common, identified with brown sleeving. We also identified with brown sleeving the gray conductor. And we made the connections in here. We had the permanent line from the consumer unit coming in and connecting to the brown of the three core. And then we had the other uh, brown conductor, which is a switching line out going to the gray of the three core. Again, it didn't matter if they were the other way around, as long as we split those two original conductors across the new introduced three core conductors of brown and gray. And again, for me, we connect the common as black and I know in industry often they use a different color. It doesn't matter as long as your connections are in appropriately in the right position. We're gonna go on from this video and look at testing continuity CPC polarity and insulation resistance when we've got two two-way switches on our two plate method with our LED downlighters in a future presentation.